The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storylines with Nick Eatman. What is up, everyone? I am Nick Eatman here, and it is another time for Cowboys Storyline Tuesday. And Tuesday is kind of the the shift day where you say, all right, we, we can sort of talk a little bit about what we just saw in the game before, but let's all eyes forward on the next one. And of course, with the Jets coming up and then playing yesterday, all eyes will be on this one. Aaron Rodgers, not sure. Don't think he's going to be playing. Uh, there's reports still kind of going out there that that he will miss the game. They're they're fearing could be an Achilles injury at this point. That hasn't been confirmed. But what we do know is that he did not finish the game. The Jets did come back and win that game against the Bills. It was an exciting game for them. Uh, but obviously things are different uh, without Aaron Rodgers. If that is the case, Jerry Jones said this morning on his uh, radio show, 105.3 The Fan, here in Dallas, he said that that you know he was proud of the way that the Jets came back and played that game. Shows that they're a tough team. He said they're loaded across the board, so it's going to be a tough game regardless. And I think we knew that the Jets were pretty competitive last year, you know, in, in, in some games with, without him. So uh, I, I'm, I'm expecting that would be the case. We could talk about that if y'all have questions uh, about uh, the Jets or Aaron Rodgers, or anything about this week's game coming up, uh, you can call 1-888-855-2297, or you can send a text on the text line, 817-290-3298. Other storylines, we can go quickly. Injuries uh, are going to be something we'll be watching. Jerry Jones said he thinks that all of those guys that missed the game, that includes Tyler Smith, Donovan Wilson, Jordan Lewis, those guys are on the cusp, he said, of coming back. We'll see how they practice. But I would think for the most part, if you're doubtful, like uh, Jordan, uh, like Donovan Wilson and Tyler Smith were doubtful for the game last week, I would think you would be in a position to be better than that this week. So we'll, we'll see how, how that goes. All right. We have some calls already here, ready to go here. So we'll start it off. Let's go to the phone line. Joe in Stanford. Joe, what is up? Morning, brother. Woke up just in time to call you, man. How you doing? Wow, what life that is, man. Woke up just in time. It's like 10 o'clock. I love uh, it. Dude, I, w I work in the evening. So okay. I, that... I'm a machinist. I work 3 to 8 or 3 to 11 every Ooh, day. Fair, fair. All right. What do you got, Joe? Well, a couple things. That Jets D is no joke. I don't True. care what who the quarterback is. Well, that, that's going to be interesting to have to deal with those guys. No doubt. I th I like what um, Aisha Morrison, who's on Girls Talk Boys Talk, and she said it's going to be it, it's going to be like basically a fist fight there in, in the trenches um, this week with Cowboys and Jets, and I, I think she's exactly right about that. I had another question. So. I personally figured out about two or three years ago that the best way for a Cowboys fan to get media and to watch is to stay local. So I do 105.3 The Fan on YouTube and because I, I don't live in Dallas. And then, of course, I, I really stick to DallasCowboys.com. I think that's the best way to consume Cowboys information. Um well, do you watch uh, any national guys? Because I have to, I have to be honest with you. For the most part, there's some decent ones, but for the most part, I think they're mostly clueless. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, when you co think about this, like if you covered 32 teams, or, or you know, loosely, not not all the same. Obviously, you're, you're you'd be an idiot not to to cover the Cowboys more than other teams, just because of the recognition and some other you know other teams like that. But but if you're trying to cover all the teams, there's no way. I mean, and and, and here's what's happening because I know this for, happens firsthand. These guys that cover the league, they have people here that they call and say, "Hey, I got to go do this hit on whatever," and and uh, tell me again what's going on here. So. They're they're already they're already tapping into the the local media guys anyway. Um, so I I'm not saying they're all clueless, but you know everybody's got their own thing. And if you're talking about one guy in particular on on ESPN, I think we all know that that's that's fake. So um, you know, it, it, Joe, I appreciate the the call and thanks for the the support on uh, for DallasCowboys.com. I mean, we appreciate it. You can you can basically start it off at at 9 a.m. Central Time and you can go all the way to really five o'clock 
uh, with with just shows constantly uh, one after another. So we, we're excited about that, and you get different variety of people. Me personally, I mean, I, I kind of think the ten to ten forty five spot would be really good for you. Um, that's that's ours here, Cowboy Storyline. But no, they're, they're all they're all great, and we appreciate it. All right, let's go back to the the, the call here, Brian in Kansas City. Brian, what's up? Good morning, Nick. How are you? Doing great, man. I uh, had a doctor's appointment. Didn't get to call in on Victory Monday. Oh, so man. I'm going to take, take a quick victory lap and say that was a <laughs> beatdown. Yeah, it, it definitely was. I hope you're okay there from the doctor. But, yeah, it, it certainly was, um, uh, and without a doubt. I mean, I keep I – keep, I keep pinching, not pinching myself, but I keep thinking, 40 to nothing? Like, that, <laughs> like why is this not getting talked about more? Like, that, that's, that's ridiculous. 40 no to doubt. nothing. Well, and you know what? I, I was thinking, you know, to try to bring reality back into my mind, I was thinking about that. I think it was a Minnesota game two years ago. We went in there, and they were 7-1 and one or something, mm-hmm. and it was supposed to be the battle of the heavyweights, and, and we put a, we put a – Pretty good beating on them. That was and last year. That was, was it la- that was last year? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Cooper was the year before that. Right. Yeah, I was, right. I was trying to think it was the opposite of the Cooper Rush. No, it was that was last year when that happened. It, it, but it wasn't easy going the rest of the year. You know, we had yeah. one great, unbelievable game. Well, and can I, I mean, if we're just being candid, I mean, it's because the Vikings weren't very good. I mean, they they weren't. Their record was good, but they weren't good. And they showed when they played teams that were pretty good, they they didn't really handle it. So they were, the Vikings really, I I think they were kind of a fraud, and 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 their their record was not not indicative of their team. We'll see if the Giants are that way. I mean, we'll we'll see. I mean, it, it's still early. Yep. Hey, so my question for you is, um, so if if. I, you got to guess some of those guys are going to come back to to the squad this week. The young guys played so well. Who do we lose on the on the game day roster Ooh. if Dono and J. Lou and Smith come back up? And I'm going to hang up and yeah. listen, brother. Have a great one, huh? Th- thank you. Appreciate that. And that's a you know that's kind of a curveball for me right now because that that's a that's not easy. Um, that's not an easy question. I would th- I would say I- Igbenogany. Um, who scored your first touchdown of the season, uh, will probably be inactive, though. He was playing special teams there, and I would think he's inactive if um, with Jordan Lewis coming back there at, at the cornerback spot. Um, I don't know about Wanye Thomas. I don't. Uh, how are you going to put him down? I mean, and, and Marquise Bell. So I don't know yet. I don't know how, how that, that, would, that would happen. I mean, those guys were doing some linebacker things for you. I'd hate to say, I mean, could it be Devin Harper? You're already kind of thin at linebacker as it is. He's doing mostly special team stuff, but, you know, I, you would need some backups there. Um, and then on the other side, I mean, probably T.J. Bass. If Tyler Smith comes back, T.J. Bass would probably be inactive there. But, uh, you know, good, good questions because, and good problem to have when, when Wanye Thomas and Marquise Bell are, are making plays like that. Donovan Wilson comes back. You know, we'll see. It might be one of them. But, the, I mean, anybody that's jumping over the line and getting blocked field goal, I mean, I, I'm for that. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, going back to the, the previous caller about, about the Jets, I mean, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be tough. It'll be a tough game. Their defense is, is nasty. Uh, good for them, though, for coming back and winning that game uh, in overtime. That was a fun game. And good for – MetLife Stadium, really, for getting, you know, some a good game, getting some points on the board. I mean, they scored 22, so that's, you know, for the weekend total, that would be 22, 22 for the weekend there for for both those games. So adding the, that together there, sorry, not really, not sorry. No, you get beat 40 to nothing, you should get you should get that against you. I mean, be better. I mean, that was that was that was a, a beat down. You know what's funny? You know what reminds me of that that game though. Everyone's talking about these other games the Cowboys have won. In 1985, the Cowboys played the Bears. The Cowboys were a pretty good team. They went to the playoffs that year, uh, won the division. They lost to the Bears, the 85 Bears that everyone talks about. They lost to the Bears 44 to nothing at home. 44 to nothing. They could not stay keep a quarterback healthy. It was an absolute annihilation. And, and the Cowboys were pretty good that year. But that just goes to show when when another team's on another level. It can get nasty like that. All right, let's go back to the phone line. I don't believe we've had this caller before. Joe in Maine. Joe? Hey, what's going on, Nick? What is up, man? Oh, dude, just sitting here enjoying a win. 
No doubt. No doubt. Who, who's the who's the main team in 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 Maine? I didn't really mean to pun it like that, but who's the who's the main <laughs> main team? Is it the Patriots? Is that who what most people pull for? Well, all these guys out here are Patriot fans, except uh, I got a core of Cowboys fans. I see every once in a while. Nice. You get the random guy that'll see the hat and say, "I like your hat," but we kind of keep it on the down low. All right. Well, not this week. You can you can you can just walk around all day long if you want. That's awesome. What do you got, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, my, my question for you, Nick, is that I mean, I've been a Cowboys fan since 1979, and the last couple of years, I've noticed that the Cowboys seem to play to their opponents. So teams are supposed to be beaten. We lose to or barely squeak by. What can you tell me to make me feel better about this stretch going into the Jets, Arizona, and the Patriots? Yeah. You know, I, I think a part of that – thanks for the call, Joe. I think a, a lot of that has to do with, with – that is what the NFL is designed to, to be. I mean, that's what they want it to be. They, they they give everyone the same amount of money, same amount of resources. They want the parity to be like that. So, you know, and, and, and people hate the cliche of, well, they get paid too and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and they do, but not the same. I mean, not everybody gets paid the same. So um, there's something to that. There There is something to that. I mean, and nobody wants to hear excuses, but. I mean, sometimes I think what what has happened in the past is the Cowboys teams weren't good enough to to withstand getting someone's best shot. Um, look at it when when teams like Notre Dame or University of Texas, when they're not at a high high level, they still get the target though. People still come into their place and look around and go, "Oh wow, AT and T Stadium," or "Wow, Notre Dame, this is where Rudy." Well, I mean. And, and the team isn't good enough to handle that kind of expectation. So I think that happens sometimes with the Cowboys. I think this team is good enough to to you know withstand that. Uh, I think it showed the the other night. But but yeah, there's there's been times where you kind of get everyone's best shot, and you're not good enough to to handle it. Um, we'll see if the Cowboys are, are at that level. I don't know if that answered your question. It, it, that it's a tough one to answer, but but I do think that there's there's something to that. Let's see if the Cowboys are are good enough to to kind of just go in and take care of business uh, because they're they're going to be the favorite on on most of these games here uh, moving forward. All right, uh, let, me, let me go to the text line here. Um, I got one from um, I don't see an I don't see one here from uh, the name, but it was it was about Trey Lance, and it says, uh, "Did all the Cowboys get in the game uh, Sunday night?" Thank you very much. Have a good day. Um, yeah, every pl- every player that was active played. Uh, Trey Lance was in uniform, did not play. Of course, there's rules to that. He has to be third quarterback. Has to be the other two guys have to be either injured or um, getting medical attention in the tent. Uh, so so that's the new rule there. But he wasn't really considered active. So everybody for both teams, Cowboys and Giants, did play in the game. All right, we're going from Maine to North Dakota on the phone line, Mitch. In North Dakota, what's up? We're hitting all the states I've never been to. Hey, Nick, it's great to be here, and uh, you're just doing a great job. I want to say that first Thank and you. foremost here. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. Well, I'm having fun with this show. This is this is fun. Yeah, it's really great, and I like that people can kind of take a little slight extra time and, and tell their story or ask their question without having to feel rushed against the I know, so I know, yeah, I know. People like Nate Newton, that he puts a time clock on it. I, I get it. I mean, and that's fun. And, and we talk about it all the time. Like, we want to get more calls, more, sh- you know, I think 15 to 16 is about the most we can really do. If not, we're just going to be rapid fire and flying through and all that. And that doesn't give you guys a chance to kind of talk. And, and, of course, I like to I like to hear myself talk, too. So, uh, all right, Mitch, what do you got? All right, um, so real quick, I just wanted to – I was curious about uh, Damone Clark, and maybe I missed something on his status. Is he still a, a kind of a long-term big-picture guy on this team? Um, and then a couple of blasts from the past for you. Yeah. Um, Roy Williams, the safety, mm-hmm. number 31, one of my all-time favorites, um, kind of changed the rules of the NFL with the horse collar and, um, you know, things like that. But, man, few could bring the wood like uh, Big oh, Roy there. No doubt. Um, I, one no, of my all-time favorites. No, no doubt about it. Um, uh, me too, as as well. I got a story. If we have time, I mean, of course we we have time, but I, I have a, a story there on Roy Williams. But do uh, you have any question? Are you good, or was Damone Clark your question? Um, Damone Clark was my main question. Yeah, okay. and then the Roy Williams story would be cool. Appreciate All right. It. Thank you. All right. 
Uh, uh, Damone Clark, yeah, he's part, part of the plans. I mean, he's, he's a young linebacker that they they had a second round grade on before he injured his neck and wasn't sure if he was going to be able to play last year. They 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 really liked what they saw in 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 the um, in the medical reports and said, you know what, we think we, we've got something here. And he was able to play last year. I think they got him a head start. And now he's playing fast and loose. And uh, there'll be some games where where you know people have different styles, and, and I think you'll see him really flying around the ball and getting in there. I think Damone Clark's ceiling's very high. They're really excited about him. Roy Williams. You talk about full circle. Uh, he's one of my favorite players. But for and he, and he was I, I love I remember when they when they drafted him and, and it was it was so exciting. But he was one of those guys that like some players, they didn't always understand what we do here at DallasCowboys.com. They they see us on the on the on the bus, they see us on the the plane, and it's what you know wearing the star and all that kind of stuff. Oh, there it is. Um, but but you know, and then and then when things go a little bit sour with the team or them personally, then they take offense to us being critical or just saying what what we need to say. So he he was one that didn't didn't like that too much. So. I tell this story now because I, I consider Roy a friend, and, and we, we were able to kind of uh, patch it up. But we, we were going into Atlanta. Uh, we were playing. It was the Falcons in 2006, late in the season. And, I, you know, his at that point, his career kind of, you know, he's been a little rocky there. I think people realized that, that you know, him at coverage and safety wasn't his spot. Uh, also, the horse collar things were, were kind of getting to him. Um, I think um, – Mentally, I think that it was kind of you know overbearing a little bit, so a lot of pressure on him. But we, we were at going to the game, and I was told by our operations guy, "Well, this bus is full. Just get on this bus." So I was like, "Okay, cool. I get on the bus. It's pretty empty." So I'm sitting there. We're about ten minutes. Thankfully, it's only about a ten minute drive there downtown Atlanta. He comes and sits down, and I could just feel him staring at me. And I kind of like look over, and I'm like, "He looks at me. He's like, are you supposed to be on this bus?" And I was like, "Yeah. Is that okay? Probably shouldn't have said, "Is that okay?" And he just looked at me. He's like, "No." That is not okay, and he was he was pissed. He put his headphones on. You know, he was just shaking his head, and I was sitting here thinking, like, why don't you worry about Michael Vick? You know, why don't you worry about that or Algie Crumpler or somebody like that? I mean, you know, don't worry about who's on the bus. But anyways, that we ended up having a long, nice long talk at training camp, probably the next year on the field in Oxnar for a long time. I kind of told him where we stood. He told where, where he, you know his point was, and and we became you know, it was cool. To the point where we were able to, just a few years ago, do a documentary on him. Uh, we called it The, the Late Hit. And uh, I, I was one of the, it, it, he was one of the best people we've worked with on these Deep Blue documentaries. He just said, hey, you do it your way. You got whatever story you want to tell. He opened up his, his home. He opened up all of his, his, you know, all of his memorabilia that he had. And so it was really cool. And, and uh, I, like, I like Roy a lot. I uh, understood a little bit where he was coming from. And, man, if he was playing in a different era. Um, he'd be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, there's no doubt about it. If he would played in the 90s, that's why we called it the late hit. If he was playing in the 90s or the 80s, he'd be in the Hall of Fame, and I firmly believe that. All right, let's go to the um, caller, Tim, in uh, New York. Tim, what's up? Hey, Nick, how are you? I'm Congratulations good. on your show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Having a lot of fun. Good. Yeah, I've been following you for years, followed you on the break. And one thing that I had noticed, I called in on the break once about, um, uh, you know, getting that trash can full of dirt hmm. in the middle because of the concern. This was under the Marinelli regime right. on defense. And, you know, as much as we all love Dan Quinn, the thing that I was so concerned in watching even that first drive against the Giants the other night before the block field goal, I mean, we still struggle – with the run defense, even, you know, with having Hankins, we've drafted Mozzie. So they're doing the things that, that you and I actually wanted them to do. Uh, but it's just still, we're still struggling in that area. And I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but, you know, it's the concern of the way, if I were attacking this defense, I mean, I'm going to run the ball as much as possible and try to slow the game down because I don't want to face that Cowboys pass rush, obviously, or their secondary. Yeah. Um, I mean, how concerned yeah. are you uh, with what I'm saying here? Yeah, um, I think it's something to watch. Um, I, I don't. I'm not concerned yet because 
week one of the season is is always a little bit of a crapshoot. You know, you're trying to see. You don't really know exactly what teams are going to do uh, and, and what kind of schemes they're going to uh, employ. I, I, you know, like I think the Giants came out and did something different with with the way that they they block on their offensive line, and and it, it kind of took the Cowboys a little bit by by storm. They they adjusted, um, patched it up, and. That was the end of that. Now the game got out of hand too. They didn't really run the ball as much, and that's going to be the key: is you got to start fast. You can't get behind on the Cowboys and then try to throw your way back into the game. I think that that's going to be a, a recipe for disaster for for most teams. So, um, I'm, I mean, it's it's one it's one drive really. It's not just one game. It was like one drive, and to start the season. I, I'm not saying don't worry about it. I'm saying let's just let's monitor it and let's see. Um, I I kind of think that they're going to be okay at defensive line. Um, and and I think that they've they've you know when Hankins is in there, Hankins Hankins did well. Hankins did well last year. Uh, when he got hurt, they struggled some. He came back, it's better. And I think Mozzie's going to get better. I think Damone Clark is is a lot better there as well. So. Not worried just yet. I'm not. I'm not worried at all. I'm saying I. I think if you are worried, let's let's give it a little bit of time here before we we you know before we really hit the panic button on their run defense. All right, um, man, it's time to take a break. But I'm going to do a text line question really quick here. Um, this is from Dan in Philly. He said, if Dak played like Josh Allen did last night with all those picks, how bad would he be vilified? Bad. That Dallas and Buffalo are different. I mean, they're just they're different in the way that people, you know. I mean, I'm thankfully NFL Network is showing it right here right now for turnovers, uh, 29 to 41, 236, and a touchdown. Um, you know, but it, it's it's not the same. I mean, it's never been the same. I mean, look at Romo. Romo would would never get. I mean, there were number one picks in the draft. Matthew Stafford and, and 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 Matt Ryan, which was a what, third overall pick, those guys were you know those guys never got compared the same as as Tony Romo. It just doesn't it doesn't happen that way. And you know what the reason why that we we do what we do here and why we have eight shows and uh, a day and all that the coverage is there. That's the way it is. And so you can't have it both ways. Uh, Dak gets treated different than than quarterback. That's fine. But if you're able to win. Then you know he'll he'll get treated differently uh, as well. Let's go one more caller before I take a break here. Uh, Kevin's on the line in Rochester, New York. Kevin, what's up? Nick, you, I have no idea how excited I am to talk to you. <laughs> what's up, man? Hey, uh, I'm just so jacked on your show. Great show. I just got six points real quick. Six. Um, why do we keep shortchanging ourselves? We keep calling ourselves America's team. I think we conquered America back in the 70s. We should be recognized, according to Forbes, that we should be the world's team. And not Cowboys Nation. I think this is Cowboys Universe because that's how large we are. We have people calling from all over the country, all over the world, calling into the Cowboys. So I think we should be recognized as the world's team. And on Talking Cowboys, they asked the question about Minnesota versus last year's Minnesota game versus this game against the Giants. Which one was more dominating? I got to go with the Minnesota game just because Cooper Rush was in the game and not Dak Prescott. Third point, would you please tell my friend James, who is a Giants fan, I'm pretty sure he's probably listening right now, what you are known for on the Internet, and is that a record, Nick? Uh, Fourth, the Giants game was the most pathetic game that they have at the Cowboys and the Giants have ever come come together and played. Yep. For me, the most pathetic game to me for the Cowboys is during the strike season, the 83 or 82 season, when they played Washington. We had some starters playing. They had none. To me, that was the most pathetic game the Cowboys could have ever played. I would love to hear your right. most pathetic game. Number five, Cowboys came to Rochester back in 95, 96. And I remember when Larry Brown, we played the 49ers back then, and Larry Brown gave up a touchdown to Jerry Rice right at the half. And that set me, that set me on a, a, a downward spiral. They came here to Rochester for a charity basketball game, and at the end of the game, they're going around doing autographs. Who comes to me but Larry Brown? And I let him sign the autograph, and then I let him have it, told him how pathetic he was for letting Larry Rice score that touchdown. If you talk to Larry Brown, 
I'm pretty sure he'll remember that. I'm the guy he was talking to. Huh. And sixth and last of all, who is on your Mount Rushmore? Four players. Oh. Who is on your Mount Rushmore? I'll hang up all and right. let you talk. All right. All right. Uh, I appreciate that. Probably should have gone to break before the, uh, the guy with the six points. Um should have. He's from Rochester, New York. He should have played for the Giants. I mean, the, you, if you had six points in your bag, uh, the Giants could have used you the other night. Wow, a um, lot of stuff there. Uh, your years are off a little bit on some of this. Minnesota, you talked about Minnesota game. That was uh, Dak actually played that game last year. Uh, Cooper played two years ago. Um, the strike year you're referring to was actually in 1987 when the Scab guys played and the Cowboys lost to the Redskins there. They had a few veterans playing in the game lost to the Redskins they made a movie out of that called The Replacements if you've seen that with Keanu Reeves um I don't know about the most pathetic that whole season I mean I don't understand uh Larry Brown I doubt under remembers that I don't think he's worried about that and I I kind of disagree with you there uh, because last I checked Jerry Rice beat a lot of people uh he beat a lot of uh, corners for touchdowns in his in his career um so that was a tough I know you're talking about NFC championship game he gave up the the play but kind of redeemed himself the next year when I went in the Super Bowl MVP. Four uh, players on uh, Mount Rushmore. Let me think about that one, and uh, we'll, we'll, let's go to break. I'll come back. I'll, I'll think about Mount Rushmore. We're going to go to break here on Cowboys Storyline. Be right back. Fall is here, and that means football is back, bringing all the delicious game day foods with it. As you prep for all the big games, tailgates, and watch parties, let Yokiero be your one-stop destination for all things home gating. Yokiero's fresh, flavorful, ready-to-serve guacamole made with real Hass avocados will score taste bud touchdowns as you cheer on the Cowboys. Yokiero's wide range of mouth-watering and versatile products can be found in your local grocery store's produce or deli section. Grab some today. Star Sports Tours is the only official fan travel partner of the Dallas Cowboys, offering exclusive game weekend travel packages with pre-game sideline access and photo ops with current players, cheerleaders, and cowboy legends. You want to stay at a team hotel, attend the best tailgate party in Texas, tour the star, and talk X's and O's with me, Everson Walls? With Star Sports Tours, you can. Visit CowboysTravel.com to book your travel package today. SeatGeek has your back no matter what kind of Cowboys fan you are. So whether you're a diehard fan or a don't really care fan, a we got them next time fan or we'll never win again fan, a here for the tailgate fan or a first one through the gates fan, SeatGeek not only makes buying and selling tickets easier than ever before, they make just about everything else easier too. So whether you're a here every week fan or haven't been here in years fan, SeatGeek has you covered. Download the SeatGeek app today. SeatGeek, your Taking the great Dallas Cowboys seats. How's Wingstop sound? Crispy, juicy, classic wings. Made to order, cooked to perfection, and sauced and tossed in those 11 soul satisfying flavors. Paired with hand cut seasoned fries, house made honey mustard, blue cheese, or signature Wingstop ranch. And of course, spicy Cajun fried corn. I think you've heard enough. Get your flavor delivered at Wingstop.com. Back, back to Cowboys Storylines. Welcome back, Cowboys Storyline. We're still talking about uh, Kevin, the last caller here. He had, had all the points. He had, had some good stuff there. Had, had some good stuff. And I, I say this before. We just talked about, like, we're not put, putting a limit on callers or anything. That was, that was a little, little long there. Uh, I might cut into how many we have, but he had some good stuff. His last question was Mount Rushmore. Who's on the Mount Rushmore? I might put that on uh, X Twitter and, and see if what the, the fans will throw in there. I think the Cowboys Mount Rushmore – for players, I mean, it, it's it's easy to get three. I mean, I think Bob Lilly, Roger Straubach, Emmitt Smith, for sure. It's your fourth one that I think that probably tells you how old you are and also just kind of what you think about football and, 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 and do you like linemen? Do you like, you know, the skill players? I mean, um, Aikman would be in there. Irvin, I mean, Larry Allen, I think, is one of the better – football players that's ever played the game and he was in there Randy White I mean take your pick on that fourth one he asked my Mount Rushmore like for me like just the players that I've watched and covered and for whatever the reason different 
you know, different list because I, I view it differently. I'm not saying these are the best players, but these are my favorite players. I would say Darren Woodson for sure. Jason Witten, Tony Dorsett. I mean, Tony Dorsett, that was my guy growing up. I mean, as a kid, Tony Dorsett was the best. And then, uh, I don't know, that fourth one's tough, I guess. When Deion Sanders played for the Cowboys, that he he was my favorite player. I mean, Deion Sanders was definitely my favorite player, without a doubt, for the Cowboys. He was. That's the thing about Deion. He's... You can like him and, and and hate him at the same time. That's that's what he is. That's what he's always done. He was awesome with the 49ers when he was kicking everyone's ass, including the Cowboys, but fun to watch. Uh, that's just who he is. All right, let's go to the phone lines again. Chris and Indy, what's up, Chris? What's up, Nick? I still can't believe I thought I was dreaming. I, I was actually shocked. I went back and watched the All-22 and how good Chuma Idoga played at guard. Much yeah. better fit at guard than yep. his at tackle. I mean, he actually played really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, he so, did. Hopefully Tyler's back this week because Quinn and Williams for the debt. Oof. That man is a monster. Yeah. A monster. That's going to be a good one. I hope he's back, too, because I want to see that. I want to see the strength-on-strength strength yeah. matchup. Yeah, me too. And they did report that um, Rogers MRI came back and torn ACL. He's out for the year. ACL so, or a, yeah. Okay, I thought it was going to be an Achilles. It's Achilles. Right? Yeah, I think I think it yeah, might Achilles, be Achilles. Achilles. Yeah, Achilles. I'm sorry, Achilles. Achilles. I'm Different sorry. injury for sure. Um, yeah. I tell you what, man, that Achilles is undefeated. And uh, a, a trainer told me not too long ago these soft tissue injuries, but Achilles mainly. Men, 38 to 43. 38 to 43. Watch out. If you're out there thinking you can still play basketball or do whatever you can, be careful. 38 to 43 is the wheelhouse for an Achilles. And what is Aaron Rodgers? 39. Mm, yep. 30, 39 years old. That, the, it's bad for the Jets, you know, because they had a real – they got a real team. They yeah. got real offensive playmakers. Yeah. Garrett Wilson, that dude's so talented. So talented. That catch was sick. That was it. That touchdown catch yep. was unbelievable. You got a question or you? I want to give. Go ahead. I want to give a shout out to Beam in the back, man. Yeah. All these shows he does all day long is unbelievable, unbelievable and amazing. I listen from the first show to the very last show, and knowing he's in the back, back there, just shout out to Beam in the back. All so, right, that's awesome. Those right. you you guys named Chris stick together, I guess, huh? Uh, but no, you you're a hundred percent right. Uh, he's the MVP of all of our shows. He does he does a great job. Absolutely cares. And I say that he's he's listening. I'm, I'm saying cares about the quality of the show. Uh, and when you have that, when you have people that that actually support and care, that's you, you can't beat that at, at all. Um, all right, Jeff in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Jeff, what is up? Yes, yes sir. I just want to say uh, yesterday was a, kind of a sad day for America. But let me just say this: that was my birthday yesterday. Oh, really? <laughs> and uh, and I'm a, I just want to bring a little perspective here. Uh, I became a Cowboys fan when I was 17 years old. Yesterday, I turned 71. Wow. Okay? So that gives you an idea of the scope of uh, seeing what the Cowboys have been doing over my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to bring this thought that um, when the when the boys played that game yesterday, put that 40-burger on New York, and people are saying, wow, is New York that bad? Is New York that bad? I think we need to just stop and say, you know what? New York really did have a very good team. But that should tell you that the way we're playing, we're in another level of play. So these aren't bad teams. New York's not a bad team. We're just that much better. Yeah. I, I it's we'll see, but I, I think you're right about that. I don't think the Giants are, are, are that bad of a team. Um I think that the Cowboys it, and also, you know, st- we talk about in boxing references too. Styles make fights. I said this all last year. I said it in uh, you know leading up to this game. The Giants were not better than the Cowboys a- at all. Those two games, if you look at it, they looked close. They were not. They were not. I remember the first game up there. I was like, this should be a blowout. Cowboys are losing. Like, what is going on? They finally turned it on and won the game. The Thanksgiving Day game, they were way better. I think the Giants scored late to make it look like it was closer than it was, but it was not. They they are not on the same level right now. The scary part is is that the Giants drafted two first round tackles in the top ten in the last few years. Andrew Thomas, uh, Evan Neal, and they didn't look like top ten players. So there's a lot of teams out there that don't have that kind of uh, 
I guess, talent at, at offensive tackle. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be a challenge for them. All right, um, let's go to the calls. Fernando in Miami. Fernando, what's, what's up, up, Nick? What's up, bud? Look, uh, I was listening to the show and I heard you say one of your favorite players was Dorsett. Yes, and same here. So I was thinking, wouldn't it be beautiful before we leave this earth to see a running back wear number 33 again on the Cowboys? Yeah, I um, I I agree with that. I, I, I but I, I view it a little differently, and and I and I think that the equipment manager uh, for the Cowboys, Mike McCord, who who worked with. Buck Buchanan, whose son Bucky Buchanan is on the staff now, so they 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 really take care of the history. They really do, and 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 uh-huh. I think for them, they look at it as more disrespectful. Like we'll put thirty three, we you know running out of numbers here, but we're not gonna put them in a running back, or you know, uh-huh. uh, you might see eight at some point, not in a quarterback. I don't know about that. Maybe not eight, yeah, twelve, because... seventy four. But I'm just saying, um, I but I as a tribute. I think it would be really cool to to see that. Um, I just I loved watching Tony Dorsett. I felt like a traitor though when I was ten years old because they signed Herschel and I liked Herschel too. Herschel was like new and cool and big strong guy, but I like oh, yeah, lo- yeah. loved both of them. Tony Dorsett just when you look back now, see I I didn't realize at the time that how undersized he was to play running back. Uh, I just thought he was mm-hmm. cool and fast and all that. But, I mean, to play that long and to play at that size is pretty remarkable. And one quick question. Do you think them signing Gilmore can have the same impact that when the Raiders got Mike Haynes and they had Lester Hayes on the other side? I remember in 83, I was like, wow, this is going to take that Raider team over the top. And they beat the Eagles with uh, Jaworski. Yeah. Uh, beat the yeah. Sorry. And the Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm a little. I, I'm. I'm kind of quirky when it comes to years. I, I don't like correct the people. I think that was a little. That was a little later. I think they beat the Eagles in '80. Uh, that might be okay, what you're yeah. talking about. I think you're talking about that. That. And I. I don't remember when they signed these guys and all that. I know that the Raiders won in '83 against the Redskins. I don't remember when Hayes and Haynes got there and all that. I was. I was probably in diapers. Yeah, that but, put them over the top. Yeah, and so they. And they were good. Gilmore. Yeah. And uh, Diggs could. Uh, yeah. Well, the, the guy, the guy that people are referencing too. Thanks for the call, uh, Fernando. The guy that people are referencing a little bit sooner than that, but still a ways ago was Charles Haley. I mean, can, can you be that or Dion? I mean, Dion in '95. I mean, Charles Haley in '92. Those guys took him to another level. Um, the thing about Gilmore is he takes your superstar corner to another level. Trayvon Diggs is at another level and needs a little bit of help over there, um, like they all do. And 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 who knows? I mean, Gil, I'm not saying Gilmore, he was a defensive player of the year himself, but I, I think that just having both of them there, on top of a pass rush that is just absolute nasty, this defense is, I mean, the sky's the limit. It really is. All right, uh, back to the line here. Vince in Albuquerque, New Mexico. A lot of calls from New Mexico. It's, it's, uh, Seems like a ton of Cowboy fans there. So you can either pick Cowboys or Cardinals. You can go one way or another. I think looks like they go Dallas. All right, Vince, what's up, man? Oh, uh, not too much. Great show once again. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, on the New York Jets and the Giants, <clears throat> excuse me, how much familiarity do you think they have on both teams? Because the, <clears throat> the defensive line is pretty much the same as the Giants, but their defensive backs are better. Their offense uh, pretty much the same, don't you think? Um, I, are you talking about the Jets' offense and the Giants' offense? Yes, yeah, because uh, they've got some good running backs. Yeah, uh, the wide receiver probably is a lot better. Their tight end is is uh, about the same. Right. Uh, so th- I think they're kind of familiar with that, or the same as like that. And the defense, <laughs> of course, the Jets have better defensive backs, but the front line is uh, comparable, yeah. about the same same as the Giants. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I get your point. I mean, the, from from a skills point stand uh, standpoint, there, yeah, and, and also on defense too. I mean, where they're really good is right there in the middle. Um, I think the Jets have a lot better cornerback though. Um, uh, there, it's Sauce Gardner, but um, overall, yeah, I could, you can make some comparisons. Um, I can tell you this: the Cowboys I, at training camp had about forty-one assistant coaches. Okay, I think I would imagine. 
a lot of them probably were glued into hard knocks when the Jets were on. I mean, you have to be because it's not just about certain things and a guy's mic'd up and he's talking all that. They're looking at other little things up there too. Now, I, now most teams are really cognizant on making sure they don't show you know things really wide and all that kind of stuff. But I guarantee you they were looking at that. So the Cowboys are probably they're unfamiliar with the Jets, but I bet you they were they were they had that HBO Max uh, subscription working there and and, were, and looking at that. Things have changed, obviously, now with with the injury to Aaron Rodgers, um, and and uh, Zach Wilson takes over. Um, he's got some athletic ability too. He reminds me a little bit of Daniel Jones too, and just that he is very athletic, can can move around a little bit. Um, he'll turn the ball over some as well. Brees Brees Hall, I mean, he he's definitely back uh, without a doubt. He looks he looked really good uh, last night. So it's going to be a fun matchup. I mean, uh, it, it's you know depends on how you look at it. I mean, I, I yeah, I wanted them to. to play Aaron Rodgers. I mean, that, that, that game, the excitement, but this is still going to be a, a huge game. I say it all the time. You've heard me say it a billion times. Every year the schedule comes out, I look at week two. Week two to me is the most important one of the season. Um, and I still believe that. And I, I thought this year more than ever. And the reason why I say that, if you lose the first game, you better win the second game. You can't go 0-2. If you win the first game, you got to stack it. You got You can't show this is going to be an eight and eight type of thing. You got to get up there. I know they don't. They play seventeen now, but um, you you have to 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 build on that. Especially with the Cardinals thing coming, you have a chance to really do something big. So uh, this game is 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 really really important. All right, uh, David in Fort Worth, you're on the line. David, what's up? Uh, what's up, Nick? How you doing, man? Uh, um, good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, I just wanted to um, ask you a question. I listened to the Players' Lounge as, as well as other podcasts, and, and I was just wondering, um, I heard Nui Scruggs, I believe it's Nui, who um, mentioned that like he feels like Deuce Vaughn and Kevontae Turpin are kind of like both holding the same roster spot, like they're essentially like the same gadget type of player. And um, I was just wondering, with Donovan Wilson coming back and with uh, Jay Lou coming back, like what what your take is on that, and if possibly one of them can be kind of sidelined for a Russia spot. And then I did want to throw a Roy Williams thing out there if I have time. If that, if that's yeah, thing. go for it, man. I, I, you're going to correct me on the year <laughs> because you're the goat. Sorry, but I think it was like '06 or '05, and it was. Um, Dallas versus Eagles. I think it was like a Monday night game, maybe a Sunday night game. And oh, man. Uh, McNab- McNabb was, was dealing with like a sports hernia, and Roy Williams got that pick six at the end of the game. Man, I was a kid. I was like in high school still, and I was like fired up. I was like, man, this is so sick. I wore 31 because of him. Wow. Didn't play anywhere near as good as him, but I wore it. <laughs> so, well, yeah, man. thank you for that. For that. Um, the, I, of course, I got a story for that. It's called Storyline. So, I mean, um, I I can definitely I have a story about that's one of my favorite stories ever that that game right there really quick though what you let you said uh, they have four running backs active and and Lipke's one of them obviously Deuce Vaughn so you're right when you're thinking about inactives it doesn't always go position for position uh, four might be a little heavy um, yeah I mean if Tur- if Turpin's going to be used that way as a runner then maybe they are kind of playing the same position right now. So we'll we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens. We'll let them kind of deal with that. Real quick, on uh, make sure I don't have another caller. I think that'll be it. I'm going to tell the story, then we'll wrap up. Um, the Roy Williams game you're talking about, you were right, 2005. Um, I think they were down like 20 to 7. They were down and, and late in the game. And that game, Parcells was the coach. And what happened was is his brother, Parcells' brother, passed away the weekend before, a few days before, and the funeral was that Monday. It was a Monday night game, like you said. It was a Monday because we were, uh, you know, they lived in New Jersey and it was Philly, so it was really close. He was able to go and attend some services that Monday. That's where they, they did it, his brother, who played running back, I believe, at Army. And later in the game, and then they're down, and they get Cowboys win. And Roy Williams gets the pick, runs it in for the touchdown, gives Parcells the game ball. And he said, you know, wow, this is awesome. Thank you, you know, so much. And he was walking out, and he was reminded. He said, you know, Roy Williams gave you the game ball. Uh, your brother wore number 31. And, and Parcells, with tears in his eyes, just looked at the guys and said, hell of a day. Hell of a day. So with that, 
let's leave. I love that story. I love that story. And again, I, and I and I love Roy Williams. I think Roy Williams. I, I, I tell that story, but to tell it that that I, I have a lot of respect for him and 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 the the player he was and all that. But uh, that was a cool game. That was a, that was one of those. That was one of those comeback wins against the Eagles on the road where they basically just stole the game. So, uh, all right. So for that, storyline was in full effect, you guys. Got 11 calls. That was great. I'm going to say 12 because one guy like took up a couple calls there. Uh, but I love it. He had some good stuff always. All right. Make sure and stay with us here because uh, coming up here in a few minutes, we've got the Cowboys break. And we got about five more shows after that. So you can stay with us all day long. For Chris Beam, I'm Nick Eatman. We'll see you tomorrow. Cowboys storyline. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!